Heat capacity or thermal capacity is a measurable physical quantity equal to the ratio of the heat added to or removed from an object to the resulting temperature change. The unit of heat capacity is joule per kelvin. J K display style mathrm tfrac J K or kilogram meter squared per kelvin second squared K G M two K S two display style mathrm tfrac kilogram c d o t m caret two K c d o t s caret two in the International System of Units (SI), the dimensional form is L two m t minus two theta minus one. Specific heat is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of mass by one kelvin. Heat capacity is an extensive property of matter, meaning that it is proportional to the size of the system. When expressing the same phenomenon as an intensive property, the heat capacity is divided by the amount of substance, mass, or volume, thus the quantity is independent of the size or extent of the sample. The molar heat capacity is the heat capacity per unit amount SI unit, mole, of a pure substance, and the specific heat capacity, often called simply specific heat, is the heat capacity per unit mass of a material. Nonetheless some authors use the term specific heat to refer to the ratio of the specific heat capacity of a substance at any given temperature to the specific heat capacity of another substance at a reference temperature, much in the fashion of specific gravity. In some engineering contexts, the volumetric heat capacity is used. Temperature reflects the average randomized kinetic energy of constituent particles of matter i.e., atoms or molecules relative to the center of mass of the system, while heat is the transfer of energy across a system boundary into the body other than by work or matter transfer. Translation, rotation, and vibration of atoms represent the degrees of freedom of motion which classically contribute to the heat capacity of gases, while only vibrations are needed to describe the heat capacities of most solids, as shown by the Dulong Petit law. Other contributions can come from magnetic and electronic degrees of freedom in solids, but these rarely make substantial contributions. For quantum mechanical reasons, at any given temperature, some of these degrees of freedom may be unavailable, or only partially available, to store thermal energy. In such cases, the heat capacity is a fraction of the maximum. As the temperature approaches absolute zero, the heat capacity of a system approaches zero because of loss of available degrees of freedom. Quantum theory can be used to quantitatively predict the heat capacity of simple systems. History In a previous theory of heat common in the early modern period, heat was thought to be a measurement of an invisible fluid, known as the caloric. Bodies were capable of holding a certain amount of this fluid, hence the term heat capacity, named and first investigated by Scottish chemist Joseph Black in the 1750s. Since the development of thermodynamics in the 18th and 19th centuries, scientists have abandoned the idea of a physical caloric, and instead understand heat as a manifestation of a system's internal energy. Heat is no longer considered a fluid, but rather a transfer of disordered energy. Nevertheless, at least in English, the term heat capacity survives. In some other languages, the term thermal capacity is preferred, and it is also sometimes used in English. Topic: <laughs> Units. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Extensive properties. In the International System of Units, heat capacity has the unit joules per kelvin J, K. The heat capacity symbol C of a system is defined as the ratio of heat transferred to or from the system and the resulting change in temperature in the system C T equals delta Q D T Display style C T equals frac delta Q D T, where the symbol delta designates heat as a path function. If the temperature change is sufficiently small, the heat capacity may be assumed to be constant. C equals Q delta T. Display style C equals frac Q delta T. 
Heat capacity is an extensive property, meaning it depends on the extent or size of the physical system studied. A sample containing twice the amount of substance as another sample requires the transfer of twice the amount of heat Q to achieve the same change in temperature delta T display style delta T topic intensive properties for many purposes it is more convenient to report heat capacity as an intensive property an intrinsic characteristic of a particular substance in practice, this is most often an expression of the property in relation to a unit of mass. In science and engineering, such properties are often prefixed with the term specific. International standards now recommend that specific heat capacity always refer to division by mass. The units for the specific heat capacity are C equals J K G K Display style C equals Mathem TFRAC J kilogram C D O T K. In chemistry, heat capacity is often specified relative to one mole, the unit of amount of substance, and is called the molar heat capacity. It has the unit C M O L equals J M O L K. Display style C underscore Mathem mole equals Mathem TFRAC J mole C D O T K. For some considerations, it is useful to specify the volume specific heat capacity, commonly called volumetric heat capacity, which is the heat capacity per unit volume and has SI units S equals J M three K. Display style S equals Mathem TFRAC J M carrot three C D O T K. This is used almost exclusively for liquids and solids, since for gases it may be confused with specific heat capacity at constant volume. Topic: Alternative unit systems. While SI units are the most widely used, some countries and industries also use other systems of measurement. One older unit of heat is the kilogram calorie cal, originally defined as the energy required to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of water by 1 degree Celsius, typically from 14.5 to 15.5 degrees Celsius. The specific average heat capacity of water on this scale would therefore be exactly 1 cal, c degree kilogram. However, due to the temperature dependence of the specific heat, a large number of different definitions of the calorie came into being. Whilst once it was very prevalent, especially its smaller CGS variant the gram calorie cal, defined thus the specific heat of water would be 1 cal, kg. In most fields the use of the calorie is now archaic. In the United States other units of measure for heat capacity may be quoted in disciplines such as construction, civil engineering, and chemical engineering. A still common system is the English engineering units in which the mass reference is pound mass and the temperature is specified in degrees Fahrenheit or Rankin. One rare unit of heat is the pound calorie LB cal, defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Celsius. On this scale the specific heat of water would be 1 lb cal, klb. More common is the British thermal unit, the standard unit of heat in the U.S. construction industry. This is defined such that the specific heat of water is 1 btu, f degree lb. The path integral Monte Carlo method is a numerical approach for determining the values of heat capacity, based on quantum dynamical principles. However, good approximations can be made for gases in many states using simpler methods outlined below. For many solids composed of relatively heavy atoms atomic number greater than iron, at non-cryogenic temperatures, the heat capacity at room temperature approaches 3R equals 24.94 joules per kelvin per mole of atoms Joulong Petit Law, R is the gas constant. Low temperature approximations for both gases and solids at temperatures less than their characteristic Einstein temperatures or Debye temperatures can be made by the methods of Einstein and Debye discussed below. 
Water liquid, CP equals 4185.5 J, kilogram K 15 degrees Celsius, 101.325 kPa Water liquid, CVH equals 74.539 J, mole K 25 degrees Celsius For liquids and gases, it is important to know the pressure to which given heat capacity data refer. Most published data are given for standard pressure. However, different standard conditions for temperature and pressure have been defined by different organizations. The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry IUPAC changed its recommendation from 1 atmosphere to the round value 100 kPa approximately equals 750.062 torr. Topic: <laughs> Measurement It may appear that the way to measure heat capacity is to add a known amount of heat to an object, and measure the change in temperature. This works reasonably well for many solids. However, for precise measurements, and especially for gases, other aspects of measurement become critical. The heat capacity can be affected by many of the state variables that describe the thermodynamic system under study. These include the starting and ending temperature, as well as the pressure and the volume of the system before and after heat is added. So rather than a single way to measure heat capacity, there are actually several slightly different measurements of heat capacity. The most commonly used methods for measurement are to hold the object either at constant pressure Cp or at constant volume Cv. Gases and liquids are typically also measured at constant volume. Measurements under constant pressure produce larger values than those at constant volume because the constant pressure values also include heat energy that is used to do work to expand the substance against the constant pressure as its temperature increases. This difference is particularly notable in gases where values under constant pressure are typically 30% to 66.7% greater than those at constant volume. Hence the heat capacity ratio of gases is typically between 1.3 and 1.67. The specific heat capacities of substances comprising molecules as distinct from monatomic gases are not fixed constants and vary somewhat depending on temperature. Accordingly, the temperature at which the measurement is made is usually also specified. Examples of two common ways to cite the specific heat of a substance are as follows. Water liquid, Cp equals 4185.5 J, kilogram K 15 degrees Celsius, 101. 325 kPa Water liquid, CVH. Equals 74.539 J, mole K 25 degrees Celsius For liquids and gases, it is important to know the pressure to which given heat capacity data refer. Most published data are given for standard pressure. However, quite different standard conditions for temperature and pressure have been defined by different organizations. The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry IUPAC changed its recommendation from 1 atmosphere to the round value 100 kPa approximately equals 750.062 torr. equals <laughs> Topic: <laughs> Calculation from first principles. Topic. The path integral Monte Carlo method is a numerical approach for determining the values of heat capacity, based on quantum dynamical principles. However, good approximations can be made for gases in many states using simpler methods outlined below. For many solids composed of relatively heavy atoms atomic number greater than iron, at non-cryogenic temperatures, the heat capacity at room temperature approaches 3 R. 24.94 joules per kelvin per mole of atoms Dulong Petit Law, R is the gas constant. Low temperature approximations for both gases and solids at temperatures less than their characteristic Einstein temperatures or Debye temperatures can be made by the methods of Einstein and Debye discussed below. <laughs> Thermodynamic relations and definition of heat capacity The internal energy of a closed system changes either by adding heat to the system or by the system performing work. Written mathematically we have delta E 
system equals e in minus e out Display style delta e underscore text system equals e underscore text in e underscore text out or d u equals delta q minus delta w display style mathrm d u equals delta q delta w for work as a result of an increase of the system volume we may write d U equals delta Q minus P D V. Display style mathrm D U equals delta Q P mathrm D V. If the heat is added at constant volume, then the second term of this relation vanishes, and one readily obtains U T V equals Q. T V equals C V display style left frac partial U partial T right underscore V equals left frac partial Q partial T right underscore V equals C underscore V. This defines the heat capacity at constant volume C V, which is also related to changes in internal energy. Another useful quantity is the heat capacity at constant pressure, Cp. This quantity refers to the change in the enthalpy of the system, which is given by H equals U plus P V. Display style H equals U plus P V. A small change in the enthalpy can be expressed as D H equals D U plus D P V display style mathrm D H equals mathrm D U plus mathrm D P V D H equals delta Q plus delta W plus D P V display style mathrm d h equals delta q plus delta w plus mathrm d p v d h equals delta q minus p d v plus p d v plus v d P display style mathrm d h equals delta q p mathrm d v plus p mathrm d v plus v mathrm d p d h equals delta q plus v d p display style mathrm d h equals delta q plus v mathrm d p and therefore, at constant pressure, we have H T P equals Q T P equals C P. Display style left frac partial H partial T right underscore P equals left frac partial Q partial T right underscore P equals C underscore P. These two equations U T V equals Q T V equals C V Display style left frac partial u partial t right underscore v equals left frac partial q partial t right underscore v equals c underscore v h t p equals q t p equals c p 
Display style left FRAC partial H partial T right underscore P equals left FRAC partial Q partial T right underscore P equals C underscore P are property relations and are therefore independent of the type of process. In other words, they are valid for any substance going through any process. Both the internal energy and enthalpy of a substance can change with the transfer of energy in many forms i.e., heat. <laughs> Relation between heat capacities Measuring the heat capacity, sometimes referred to as specific heat, at constant volume can be prohibitively difficult for liquids and solids. That is, small temperature changes typically require large pressures to maintain a liquid or solid at constant volume, implying that the containing vessel must be nearly rigid or at least very strong see coefficient of thermal expansion and compressibility. Instead, it is easier to measure the heat capacity at constant pressure allowing the material to expand or contract freely and solve for the heat capacity at constant volume using mathematical relationships derived from the basic thermodynamic laws. Starting from the fundamental thermodynamic relation one can show that C P minus C V equals T P T V N V T P N Display style C underscore P C underscore V equals T left FRAC partial P partial T right underscore V N left FRAC partial V partial T right underscore P N where the partial derivatives are taken at constant volume and constant number of particles, and constant pressure and constant number of particles, respectively. This can also be rewritten as C P minus C V equals V T alpha 2 beta T display style C underscore P C underscore V equals V T frac alpha carrot 2 beta underscore T where alpha display style alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion Beta T display style beta underscore T is the isothermal compressibility. The heat capacity ratio, or adiabatic index, is the ratio of the heat capacity at constant pressure to heat capacity at constant volume. It is sometimes also known as the isentropic expansion factor. Topic: <laughs> Ideal gas. For an ideal gas, evaluating the partial derivatives above according to the equation of state, where R is the gas constant, for an ideal gas P V equals N R T display style P V equals N R T C P minus C V equals T P T V N V T P N display style C underscore P C underscore V equals T left frac partial P partial T right underscore V N left frac partial V partial T right underscore P N P equals N R T V P T V N equals N R V Display style P equals FRAC NRT V right arrow left FRAC partial P partial T right underscore V N equals FRAC NR V V equals N R T P V T P N equals N R P 
Display style v equals frac nrt p right arrow left frac partial v partial t right underscore p n equals frac nr p. Substituting t p t v n v t p n equals t N R V N R P equals N R T V N R P equals P N R P equals N R Display style t left frac partial p partial t right underscore v n left frac partial v partial t right underscore p n equals t frac n r v frac n r p equals frac n r t v frac n r p equals p frac n r p equals n r. This equation reduces simply to Mayer's relation. C P M minus C V M equals R display style C underscore P M C underscore V M equals R. The differences in heat capacities, as defined by the above Mayer relation, is only exact for an ideal gas and would be different for any real gas. Topic. Specific heat capacity The specific heat capacity of a material on a per mass basis is C equals C M display style C equals FRAC partial C partial M which in the absence of phase transitions is equivalent to C equals E M equals C M equals C Rho V Display style C equals E underscore M equals FRAC C M equals FRAC C Rho V where C Display style C is the heat capacity of a body made of the material in question M Display style m is the mass of the body. V display style v is the volume of the body. Rho equals m v display style rho equals frac m v is the density of the material for gases and also for other materials under high pressures. There is need to distinguish between different boundary conditions for the processes under consideration, since values differ significantly between different conditions. Typical processes for which a heat capacity may be defined include isobaric constant pressure, d p equals zero. Display style text d p equals zero. Or isochoric constant volume d v equals zero. Display style text d v equals zero. Processes. The corresponding specific heat capacities are expressed as c p equals c m p. Display style c underscore p equals left frac partial c partial m right underscore p c v equals c m v display style c underscore v equals left frac partial c partial m right underscore v from the results of the previous section dividing through by the mass gives the relation c P minus C V equals alpha two T rho beta T 
Display style C underscore P C underscore V equals FRAC alpha carrot two T row beta underscore T A related parameter to C Display style C is C V Display style C V the volumetric heat capacity. In engineering practice C V Display style C underscore V for solids or liquids often signifies a volumetric heat capacity, rather than a constant volume 1. In such cases, the mass specific heat capacity specific heat is often explicitly written with the subscript M display style M as C M display style C underscore M. Of course, from the above relationships, for solids one writes C M equals C M equals C volumetric rho display style C underscore M equals frac C M equals frac C underscore text volumetric rho for pure homogeneous chemical compounds with established molecular or molar mass, or a molar quantity, heat capacity as an intensive property can be expressed on a per mole basis instead of a per mass basis by the following equations analogous to the per mass equations C P M equals C N P Display style C underscore P M equals left FRAC partial C partial N right underscore P equals molar heat capacity at constant pressure C V M equals C N V display style C underscore V M equals left FRAC partial C partial N right underscore V equals molar heat capacity at constant volume, where n is the number of moles in the body or thermodynamic system. One may refer to such a per mole quantity as molar heat capacity to distinguish it from specific heat capacity on a per mass basis. Polytropic heat capacity the polytropic heat capacity is calculated at processes if all the thermodynamic properties pressure, volume, temperature change C I M equals C N Display style C underscore I M equals left FRAC partial C partial N right equals molar heat capacity at polytropic process the most important polytropic processes run between the adiabatic and the isotherm functions the polytropic index is between 1 and the adiabatic exponent gamma or kappa equals <laughs> topic <laughs> dimensionless heat capacity equals the dimensionless heat capacity of a material is C equals C N R equals C N K display style C caret asterisk equals frac C N R equals frac C N K where C is the heat capacity of a body made of the material in question J K N is the amount of substance in the body mole. R is the gas constant J, K mole. N is the number of molecules in the body dimensionless. K is Boltzmann's constant J, K molecule. In the ideal gas article, dimensionless heat capacity C C asterisk is expressed as C caret hat C and is related there directly to half the number of degrees of freedom per particle. This holds true for quadratic degrees of freedom, a consequence of the equipartition theorem. More generally, the dimensionless heat capacity relates the logarithmic increase in temperature to the increase in the dimensionless entropy per particle S equals S 
n k display style s caret asterisk equals s n k measured in nats c equals d south d lane t display style c caret asterisk equals frac text d s caret asterisk text d lane t Alternatively, using base 2 logarithms, C** relates the base 2 logarithmic increase in temperature to the increase in the dimensionless entropy measured in bits. <laughs> Heat capacity at absolute zero From the definition of entropy T D S equals delta Q display style T text D S equals delta Q the absolute entropy can be calculated by integrating from zero to the final temperature TF s T F equals T equals 0 T F Delta Q T equals Zero T F delta Q D T D T T equals zero T F C T D T T Display style s t underscore text f equals int underscore t equals zero caret t underscore text f frac delta q t equals int underscore zero caret t underscore text f frac delta q text d t frac text d t t equals int underscore zero caret t underscore text f c t frac text d t t the heat capacity must be zero at zero temperature in order for the above integral not to yield an infinite absolute entropy, which would violate the third law of thermodynamics. One of the strengths of the Debye model is that unlike the preceding Einstein model, it predicts the proper mathematical form of the approach of heat capacity toward zero, as absolute zero temperature is approached. Negative heat capacity stars. Most physical systems exhibit a positive heat capacity. However, even though it can seem paradoxical at first, there are some systems for which the heat capacity is negative. These are inhomogeneous systems that do not meet the strict definition of thermodynamic equilibrium. They include gravitating objects such as stars and galaxies, and also sometimes some nanoscale clusters of a few tens of atoms, close to a phase transition. A negative heat capacity can result in a negative temperature. According to the Virial theorem, for a self-gravitating body like a star or an interstellar gas cloud, the average potential energy a pot and the average kinetic energy UKIN are locked together in the relation U pot equals minus 2 U kin display style U underscore text pot equals 2 U underscore text kin the total energy U equals a pot plus U K I N therefore obeys U equals minus U kin display style U equals U underscore text kin if the system loses energy for example by radiating energy away into space the average kinetic energy actually increases if a temperature is defined by the average kinetic energy, then the system therefore can be said to have a negative heat capacity. A more extreme version of this occurs with black holes. According to black hole thermodynamics, the more mass and energy a black hole absorbs, the colder it becomes. In contrast, if it is a net emitter of energy, through Hawking radiation, it will become hotter and hotter until it boils away. Theory Topic Factors that affect specific heat capacity 
For any given substance, the heat capacity of a body is directly proportional to the amount of substance it contains measured in terms of mass or moles or volume. Doubling the amount of substance in a body doubles its heat capacity, etc. However, when this effect has been corrected for, by dividing the heat capacity by the quantity of substance in a body, the resulting specific heat capacity is a function of the structure of the substance itself. In particular, it depends on the number of degrees of freedom that are available to the particles in the substance. Each independent degree of freedom allows the particles to store thermal energy. The translational kinetic energy of substance particles, which manifests as temperature change, is only one of the many possible degrees of freedom, and thus the larger the number of degrees of freedom available to the particles of a substance other than translational kinetic energy, the larger will be the specific heat capacity for the substance. For example, rotational kinetic energy of gas molecules stores heat energy in a way that increases heat capacity, since this energy does not contribute to temperature. In addition, quantum effects require that whenever energy be stored in any mechanism associated with a bound system which confers a degree of freedom, it must be stored in certain minimal sized deposits quanta of energy, or else not stored at all. Such effects limit the full ability of some degrees of freedom to store energy when their lowest energy storage quantum amount is not easily supplied at the average energy of particles at a given temperature. In general, for this reason, specific heat capacities tend to fall at lower temperatures where the average thermal energy available to each particle degree of freedom is smaller, and thermal energy storage begins to be limited by these quantum effects. Due to this process, as temperature falls toward absolute zero, so also does heat capacity. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Degrees of freedom. Molecules are quite different from the monatomic gases like helium and argon. With monatomic gases, thermal energy comprises only translational motions. Translational motions are ordinary, whole body movements in 3D space whereby particles move about and exchange energy in collisions like rubber balls in a vigorously shaken container. See animation here. These simple movements in the three dimensions of space mean individual atoms have three translational degrees of freedom. A degree of freedom is any form of energy in which heat transferred into an object can be stored. This can be in translational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, or other forms such as potential energy in vibrational modes. Only three translational degrees of freedom corresponding to the three independent directions in space are available for any individual atom, whether it is free, as a monatomic molecule, or bound into a polyatomic molecule. As to rotation about an atom's axis again, whether the atom is bound or free, its energy of rotation is proportional to the moment of inertia for the atom, which is extremely small compared to moments of inertia of collections of atoms. This is because almost all of the mass of a single atom is concentrated in its nucleus, which has a radius too small to give a significant moment of inertia. In contrast, the spacing of quantum energy levels for a rotating object is inversely proportional to its moment of inertia, and so this spacing becomes very large for objects with very small moments of inertia. For these reasons, the contribution from rotation of atoms on their axes is essentially zero in monatomic gases, because the energy spacing of the associated quantum levels is too large for significant thermal energy to be stored in rotation of systems with such small moments of inertia. For similar reasons, axial rotation around bonds joining atoms in diatomic gases or along the linear axis in a linear molecule of any length can also be neglected as a possible degree of freedom as well, since such rotation is similar to rotation of monatomic atoms, and so occurs about an axis with a moment of inertia too small to be able to store significant heat energy. In polyatomic molecules, other rotational modes may become active, due to the much higher moments of inertia about certain axes which do not coincide with the linear axis of a linear molecule. These modes take the place of some translational degrees of freedom for individual atoms, since the atoms are moving in 3D space, as the molecule rotates. The narrowing of quantum mechanically determined energy spacing between rotational states results from situations where atoms are rotating around an axis that does not connect them, and thus form an assembly that has a large moment of inertia. This small difference between energy states allows the kinetic energy of this type of rotational motion to store heat energy at ambient temperatures. Furthermore, internal vibrational degrees of freedom also may become active these are also a type of translation, as seen from the view of each atom. 
In summary, molecules are complex objects with a population of atoms that may move about within the molecule in a number of different ways see animation at right, and each of these ways of moving is capable of storing energy if the temperature is sufficient. The heat capacity of molecular substances on a per atom or atom molar basis does not exceed the heat capacity of monatomic gases, unless vibrational modes are brought into play. The reason for this is that vibrational modes allow energy to be stored as potential energy in inter-atomic bonds in a molecule, which are not available to atoms in monatomic gases. Up to about twice as much energy on a per, atom basis per unit of temperature increase can be stored in a solid as in a monatomic gas, by this mechanism of storing energy in the potentials of interatomic bonds. This gives many solids about twice the atom molar heat capacity at room temperature of monatomic gases. However, quantum effects heavily affect the actual ratio at lower temperatures i.e., much lower than the melting temperature of the solid, especially in solids with light and tightly bound atoms e.g., beryllium metal or diamond. Polyatomic gases store intermediate amounts of energy, giving them a per atom heat capacity that is between that of monatomic gases 3 halves R per mole of atoms, where R is the ideal gas constant, and the maximum of fully excited warmer solids 3 R per mole of atoms. For gases, heat capacity never falls below the minimum of 3 halves R per mole of molecules, since the kinetic energy of gas molecules is always available to store at least this much thermal energy. However, at cryogenic temperatures in solids, heat capacity falls toward zero, as temperature approaches absolute zero. <laughs> Example of temperature-dependent specific heat capacity, in a diatomic gas To illustrate the role of various degrees of freedom in storing heat, we may consider nitrogen, a diatomic molecule that has five active degrees of freedom at room temperature, the three comprising translational motions plus two rotational degrees of freedom internally. Although the constant volume molar heat capacity of nitrogen at this temperature is five-thirds that of monatomic gases, on a per mole of atoms basis, it is five-sixths that of a monatomic gas. The reason for this is the loss of a degree of freedom due to the bond when it does not allow storage of thermal energy. Two separate nitrogen atoms would have a total of six degrees of freedom, the three translational degrees of freedom of each atom. When the atoms are bonded the molecule will still only have three translational degrees of freedom, as the two atoms in the molecule move as one. However, the molecule cannot be treated as a point object, and the moment of inertia has increased sufficiently about two axes to allow two rotational degrees of freedom to be active at room temperature to give five degrees of freedom. The moment of inertia about the third axis remains small, as this is the axis passing through the centers of the two atoms, and so is similar to the small moment of inertia for atoms of a monatomic gas. Thus, this degree of freedom does not act to store heat, and does not contribute to the heat capacity of nitrogen. The heat capacity per atom for nitrogen, 5 halves R per mole molecules equals 5 quarters R per mole atoms, is therefore less than for a monatomic gas, 3 halves R per mole molecules or atoms, so long as the temperature remains low enough that no vibrational degrees of freedom are activated at higher temperatures. However, nitrogen gas gains one more degree of internal freedom as the molecule is excited into higher vibrational modes that store thermal energy. A vibrational degree of freedom contributes a heat capacity of one half R each for kinetic and potential energy, for a total of R now the bond is contributing heat capacity, and because of storage of energy in potential energy is contributing more than if the atoms were not bonded. With full thermal excitation of bond vibration, the heat capacity per volume, or per mole of gas molecules approaches seven-thirds that of monatomic gases. Significantly, this is seven-sixths of the monatomic gas value on a mole of atoms basis, so this is now a higher heat capacity per atom than the monatomic figure, because the vibrational mode enables for diatomic gases allows an extra degree of potential energy freedom per pair of atoms, which monatomic gases cannot possess. See thermodynamic temperature for more information on translational motions, kinetic heat energy, and their relationship to temperature. 
However, even at these large temperatures where gaseous nitrogen is able to store seven-sixths of the energy per atom of a monatomic gas making it more efficient at storing energy on an atomic basis, it still only stores seven-twelfths THS of the maximal per atom heat capacity of a solid, meaning it is not nearly as efficient at storing thermal energy on an atomic basis, as solid substances can be. This is typical of gases, and results because many of the potential bonds which might be storing potential energy in gaseous nitrogen as opposed to solid nitrogen are lacking, because only one of the spatial dimensions for each nitrogen atom offers a bond into which potential energy can be stored without increasing the kinetic energy of the atom. In general, solids are most efficient, on an atomic basis, at storing thermal energy that is, they have the highest per atom or per mole of atom's heat capacity. Topic. Per mole of different units Topic. Per mole of molecules When the specific heat capacity, C, of a material is measured lowercase c means the unit quantity is in terms of mass, different values arise because different substances have different molar masses essentially, the weight of the individual atoms or molecules. In solids, thermal energy arises due to the number of atoms that are vibrating. Molar heat capacity per mole of molecules, for both gases and solids, offer figures which are arbitrarily large, since molecules may be arbitrarily large. Such heat capacities are thus not intensive quantities for this reason, since the quantity of mass being considered can be increased without limit. Topic. Per mole of atoms. Conversely, for molecular-based substances which also absorb heat into their internal degrees of freedom, massive, complex molecules with high atomic count—like octane—can store a great deal of energy per mole and yet are quite unremarkable on a mass basis, or on a per-atom basis. This is because, in fully excited systems, heat is stored independently by each atom in a substance, not primarily by the bulk motion of molecules. Thus, it is the heat capacity per mole of atoms, not per mole of molecules, which is the intensive quantity, and which comes closest to being a constant for all substances at high temperatures. This relationship was noticed empirically in 1819, and is called the dulong petit law, after its two discoverers. Historically, the fact that specific heat capacities are approximately equal when corrected by the presumed weight of the atoms of solids, was an important piece of data in favor of the atomic theory of matter. Because of the connection of heat capacity to the number of atoms, some care should be taken to specify a mole of molecules basis versus a mole of atoms basis, when comparing specific heat capacities of molecular solids and gases. Ideal gases have the same numbers of molecules per volume, so increasing molecular complexity adds heat capacity on a per volume and per mole of molecules basis, but may lower or raise heat capacity on a per atom basis, depending on whether the temperature is sufficient to store energy as atomic vibration. In solids, the quantitative limit of heat capacity in general is about 3 R per mole of atoms, where R is the ideal gas constant. This 3R value is about 24.9 J per mole, K. 6 degrees of freedom 3 kinetic and 3 potential are available to each atom. Each of these 6 contributes 1 half R specific heat capacity per mole of atoms. This limit of 3 R per mole specific heat capacity is approached at room temperature for most solids, with significant departures at this temperature only for solids composed of the lightest atoms which are bound very strongly, such as beryllium where the value is only of 66% of 3 R, or diamond where it is only 24% of 3 R. These large departures are due to quantum effects which prevent full distribution of heat into all vibrational modes, when the energy difference between vibrational quantum states is very large compared to the average energy available to each atom from the ambient temperature. For monatomic gases, the specific heat is only half of 3 R per mole, i.e., 3 halves R per mole due to loss of all potential energy degrees of freedom in these gases. For polyatomic gases, the heat capacity will be intermediate between these values on a per mole of atoms basis, and for heat -stable molecules would approach the limit of 3 R per mole of atoms, for gases composed of complex molecules, and at higher temperatures at which all vibrational modes accept excitational energy. 
This is because very large and complex gas molecules may be thought of as relatively large blocks of solid matter which have lost only a relatively small fraction of degrees of freedom, as compared to a fully integrated solid. For a list of heat capacities per atom mole of various substances, in terms of R, see the last column of the table of heat capacities below. Corollaries of these considerations for solids volume -specific heat capacity. Since the bulk density of a solid chemical element is strongly related to its molar mass usually about 3 R per mole, as noted above, there exists a noticeable inverse correlation between a solid's density and its specific heat capacity on a per-mass basis. This is due to a very approximate tendency of atoms of most elements to be about the same size and constancy of mole-specific heat capacity resulting in a good correlation between the volume of any given solid chemical element and its total heat capacity. Another way of stating this, is that the volume-specific heat capacity volumetric heat capacity of solid elements is roughly a constant. The molar volume of solid elements is very roughly constant, and even more reliably so also is the molar heat capacity for most solid substances. These two factors determine the volumetric heat capacity, which as a bulk property may be striking in consistency. For example, the element uranium is a metal which has a density almost 36 times that of the metal lithium, but uranium's specific heat capacity on a volumetric basis i.e. per given volume of metal is only 18% larger than lithium's. Since the volume-specific corollary of the dulong petit specific heat capacity relationship requires that atoms of all elements take up on average, the same volume in solids, there are many departures from it, with most of these due to variations in atomic size. For instance, arsenic, which is only 14.5% less dense than antimony, has nearly 59% more specific heat capacity on a mass basis. In other words, even though an ingot of arsenic is only about 17% larger than an antimony one of the same mass, it absorbs about 59% more heat for a given temperature rise. The heat capacity ratios of the two substances closely follows the ratios of their molar volumes the ratios of numbers of atoms in the same volume of each substance. The departure from the correlation to simple volumes in this case is due to lighter arsenic atoms being significantly more closely packed than antimony atoms, instead of similar size. In other words, similar sized atoms would cause a mole of arsenic to be 63% larger than a mole of antimony, with a correspondingly lower density, allowing its volume to more closely mirror its heat capacity behavior. Other factors Hydrogen bonds Hydrogen-containing polar molecules like ethanol, ammonia, and water have powerful, intermolecular hydrogen bonds when in their liquid phase. These bonds provide another place where heat may be stored as potential energy of vibration, even at comparatively low temperatures. Hydrogen bonds account for the fact that liquid water stores nearly the theoretical limit of 3 R per mole of atoms, even at relatively low temperatures i.e., near the freezing point of water. Topic. Impurities In the case of alloys, there are several conditions in which small impurity concentrations can greatly affect the specific heat. Alloys may exhibit marked difference in behavior even in the case of small amounts of impurities being one element of the alloy, for example impurities in semiconducting ferromagnetic alloys may lead to quite different specific heat properties. The simple case of the monatomic gas In the case of a monatomic gas such as helium under constant volume, if it is assumed that no electronic or nuclear quantum excitations occur, each atom in the gas has only three degrees of freedom, all of a translational type. No energy dependence is associated with the degrees of freedom that define the position of the atoms. While, in fact, the degrees of freedom corresponding to the momenta of the atoms are quadratic, and thus contribute to the heat capacity. There are n atoms, each of which has three components of momentum, which leads to three n total degrees of freedom. This gives C V equals U T 
v equals 3 2 n k b equals 3 2 n r Display style c underscore v equals left frac partial u partial t right underscore v equals frac three two n k underscore b equals frac three two n r c v m equals c v n equals three two r Display style c underscore v m equals frac c underscore v n equals frac three two r, where c v display style c underscore v is the heat capacity at constant volume of the gas. C v m display style c underscore v m is the molar heat capacity at constant volume of the gas n is the total number of atoms present in the container n is the number of moles of atoms present in the container n is the ratio of n and Avogadro's number r is the ideal gas constant 8.31446217575 j mole k equal to the product of Boltzmann's constant k b Display style k underscore text b and Avogadro's number. The following table shows experimental molar constant volume heat capacity measurements taken for each noble monatomic gas at one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. It is apparent from the table that the experimental heat capacities of the monatomic noble gases agrees with this simple application of statistical mechanics to a very high degree. The molar heat capacity of a monatomic gas at constant pressure is then C P M equals C V M plus R equals five two R Display style C underscore P M equals C underscore V M plus R equals FRAC five two R. Topic Diatomic gas In the somewhat more complex case of an ideal gas of diatomic molecules, the presence of internal degrees of freedom are apparent. In addition to the three translational degrees of freedom, there are rotational and vibrational degrees of freedom. In general, the number of degrees of freedom, F, in a molecule with Na atoms is 3 Na F equals 3 N A display style F equals 3 N underscore text A Mathematically, there are a total of three rotational degrees of freedom, one corresponding to rotation about each of the axes of three-dimensional space. However, in practice only the existence of two degrees of rotational freedom for linear molecules will be considered. This approximation is valid because the moment of inertia about the internuclear axis is vanishingly small with respect to other moments of inertia in the molecule. This is due to the very small rotational moments of single atoms, due to the concentration of almost all their mass at their centers. Compare also the extremely small radii of the atomic nuclei compared to the distance between them in a diatomic molecule. Quantum mechanically, it can be shown that the interval between successive rotational energy eigenstates is inversely proportional to the moment of inertia about that axis. Because the moment of inertia about the internuclear axis is vanishingly small relative to the other two rotational axes, the energy spacing can be considered so high that no excitations of the rotational state can occur unless the temperature is extremely high. It is easy to calculate the expected number of vibrational degrees of freedom or vibrational modes. There are three degrees of translational freedom and two degrees of rotational freedom, therefore F V equals F minus F trans minus F rot equals 6 minus 3 minus 2 equals 1. 
Display style f underscore text v equals f f underscore text trans f underscore text rot equals six three minus two equals one. Each rotational and translational degree of freedom will contribute r two in the total molar heat capacity of the gas. Each vibrational mode will contribute r display style r to the total molar heat capacity. However. This is because for each vibrational mode, there is a potential and kinetic energy component. Both the potential and kinetic components will contribute R, 2 to the total molar heat capacity of the gas. Therefore, a diatomic molecule would be expected to have a molar constant volume heat capacity of C V M equals 3 R 2 plus R plus r equals 7 r 2 equals 3.5 r Display style C underscore V M equals FRAC three R two plus R plus R equals FRAC seven R two equals three point five R where the terms originate from the translational, rotational, and vibrational degrees of freedom respectively. The following is a table of some molar constant volume heat capacities of various diatomic gases at standard temperature 25 degrees Celsius equals 298 K. From the above table, clearly there is a problem with the above theory. All of the diatomics examined have heat capacities that are lower than those predicted by the equipartition theorem, except bridge 2. However, as the atoms composing the molecules become heavier, the heat capacities move closer to their expected values. One of the reasons for this phenomenon is the quantization of vibrational, and to a lesser extent, rotational states. In fact, if it is assumed that the molecules remain in their lowest energy vibrational state because the inter-level energy spacings for vibration energies are large, the predicted molar constant volume heat capacity for a diatomic molecule becomes just that from the contributions of translation and rotation. C V M equals 3 R 2 plus R equals 5 r 2 equals 2.5 r display style c underscore v m equals frac 3 r 2 plus r equals frac 5 r 2 equals 2.5 r which is a fairly close approximation of the heat capacities of the lighter molecules in the above table if the quantum harmonic oscillator approximation is made, it turns out that the quantum vibrational energy level spacings are actually inversely proportional to the square root of the reduced mass of the atoms composing the diatomic molecule. Therefore, in the case of the heavier diatomic molecules such as chlorine or bromine, the quantum vibrational energy level spacings become finer, which allows more excitations into higher vibrational levels at lower temperatures. This limit for storing heat capacity in vibrational modes, as discussed above, becomes 7 R, 2 equals 3.5 R per mole of gas molecules, which is fairly consistent with the measured value for bridge 2 at room temperature. As temperatures rise, all diatomic gases approach this value. <laughs> General gas phase Equals. The specific heat of the gas is best conceptualized in terms of the degrees of freedom of an individual molecule. The different degrees of freedom correspond to the different ways in which the molecule may store energy. The molecule may store energy in its translational motion according to the formula E equals 1 2 m v x 2 plus v y 2 plus v z 2 display style e equals frac 1 2 m left v underscore x caret 2 plus v underscore y caret 2 plus v underscore z caret 2 right where m is the mass of the molecule and v x v y V 
Z Display style V underscore X, V underscore Y, V underscore Z is velocity of the center of mass of the molecule. Each direction of motion constitutes a degree of freedom, thus there are three translational degrees of freedom. In addition, a molecule may have rotational motion. The kinetic energy of rotational motion is generally expressed as E equals 1 2 I 1 omega 1 2 plus I 2 omega 2 2 plus I 3 omega 3 2 Display style E equals FRAC one two left I underscore one omega underscore one carrot two plus I underscore two omega underscore two carrot two plus I underscore three omega underscore three carrot two right where I is the moment of inertia tensor of the molecule and omega one omega two omega three Display style omega underscore one omega underscore two omega underscore three is the angular velocity pseudo vector in a coordinate system aligned with the principal axes of the molecule. In general, then there will be three additional degrees of freedom corresponding to the rotational motion of the molecule. For linear molecules, one of the inertia tensor terms vanishes, and there are only two rotational degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom corresponding to translations and rotations are called the rigid degrees of freedom, since they do not involve any deformation of the molecule. The motions of the atoms in a molecule which are not part of its gross translational motion or rotation may be classified as vibrational motions. It can be shown that if there are n atoms in the molecule, there will be as many as v equals 3 n minus 3 minus n r display style v equals 3n 3n underscore r vibrational degrees of freedom where n r display style n underscore r is the number of rotational degrees of freedom a vibrational degree of freedom corresponds to a specific way in which all the atoms of a molecule can vibrate the actual number of possible vibrations may be less than this maximal one, due to various symmetries. For example, triatomic nitrous oxide N2O will have only two degrees of rotational freedom since it is a linear molecule and contains N equals three atoms, thus the number of possible vibrational degrees of freedom will be V. Topic. 3 3 minus 3 minus 2. Four. There are four ways or modes in which the three atoms can vibrate, corresponding to one a mode in which an atom at each end of the molecule moves away from, or towards, the center atom at the same time, two a mode in which either end atom moves asynchronously with regard to the other two, and three and four two modes in which the molecule bends out of line, from the center, in the two possible planar directions that are orthogonal to its axis. Each vibrational degree of freedom confers two total degrees of freedom, since vibrational energy mode partitions into one kinetic and one potential mode. This would give nitrous oxide three translational, two rotational, and four vibrational modes but these last giving eight vibrational degrees of freedom, for storing energy. This is a total of F. Topic. 3 plus 2 plus 8 13 total energy storing degrees of freedom, for N2O. For a bent molecule like water H2O, a similar calculation gives 9 minus 3 minus 3. 3 modes of vibration, and 3 translational plus 3 rotational plus 6 vibrational. 12 degrees of freedom. The storage of energy into degrees of freedom 
If the molecule could be entirely described using classical mechanics, then the theorem of equipartition of energy could be used to predict that each degree of freedom would have an average energy in the amount of one half kT, where k is Boltzmann's constant, and T is the temperature. Our calculation of the constant volume heat capacity would be straightforward. Each molecule would be holding, on average, an energy of F2 kT, where F is the total number of degrees of freedom in the molecule. Note that nk equals r if n is Avogadro's number, which is the case in considering the heat capacity of a mole of molecules. Thus, the total internal energy of the gas would be F2 nkt, where n is the total number of molecules. The heat capacity at constant volume would then be a constant F2 nk, the mole-specific heat capacity would be F2 r, the molecule-specific heat capacity would be F2 k, and the dimensionless heat capacity would be just F2. Here again, each vibrational degree of freedom contributes 2 F. Thus, a mole of nitrous oxide would have a total constant volume heat capacity including vibration of 13 halves R by this calculation. In summary, the molar heat capacity, mole -specific heat capacity of an ideal gas with F degrees of freedom is given by C V M equals F 2 R Display style C underscore V M equals FRAC F two R. This equation applies to all polyatomic gases. If the degrees of freedom are known, the constant pressure heat capacity for any gas would exceed this by an extra R. See Mayer's relation above. As example, Cp would be a total of 15 halves R for nitrous oxide. Topic. The effect of quantum energy levels in storing energy in degrees of freedom The various degrees of freedom cannot generally be considered to obey classical mechanics, however. Classically, the energy residing in each degree of freedom is assumed to be continuous. It can take on any positive value, depending on the temperature. In reality, the amount of energy that may reside in a particular degree of freedom is quantized, it may only be increased and decreased in finite amounts. A good estimate of the size of this minimum amount is the energy of the first excited state of that degree of freedom above its ground state. For example, the first vibrational state of the hydrogen chloride HCl molecule has an energy of about 5.74 times 10 minus 20 joule. If this amount of energy were deposited in a classical degree of freedom, it would correspond to a temperature of about 4,156 K. If the temperature of the substance is so low that the equipartition energy of 1 half kT is much smaller than this excitation energy, then there will be little or no energy in this degree of freedom. This degree of freedom is then said to be frozen out. As mentioned above, the temperature corresponding to the first excited vibrational state of HCl is about 4,156 K. For temperatures well below this value, the vibrational degrees of freedom of the HCl molecule will be frozen out. They will contain little energy and will not contribute to the thermal energy or the heat capacity of HCl gas. Topic: <laughs> Energy storage mode. Freeze out. Temperatures It can be seen that for each degree of freedom there is a critical temperature at which the degree of freedom unfreezes and begins to accept energy in a classical way. In the case of translational degrees of freedom, this temperature is that temperature at which the thermal wavelength of the molecules is roughly equal to the size of the container. For a container of macroscopic size e.g. 10 cm this temperature is extremely small and has no significance, since the gas will certainly liquefy or freeze before this low temperature is reached. For any real gas translational degrees of freedom may be considered to always be classical and contain an average energy of 3 halves kT per molecule. The rotational degrees of freedom are the next to unfreeze. In a diatomic gas, for example, the critical temperature for this transition is usually a few tens of kelvins, although with a very light molecule such as hydrogen the rotational energy levels will be spaced so widely that rotational heat capacity may not completely unfreeze until considerably higher temperatures are reached. Finally, the vibrational degrees of freedom are generally the last to unfreeze. 
As an example, for diatomic gases, the critical temperature for the vibrational motion is usually a few thousands of kelvins, and thus for the nitrogen in our example at room temperature, no vibration modes would be excited, and the constant volume heat capacity at room temperature is 5 halves R per mole, not 7 halves R per mole. As seen above, with some unusually heavy gases such as iodine gas I2, or bromine gas bridge II, some vibrational heat capacity may be observed even at room temperatures. It should be noted that it has been assumed that atoms have no rotational or internal degrees of freedom. This is in fact untrue. For example, atomic electrons can exist in excited states and even the atomic nucleus can have excited states as well. Each of these internal degrees of freedom are assumed to be frozen out due to their relatively high excitation energy. Nevertheless, for sufficiently high temperatures, these degrees of freedom cannot be ignored. In a few exceptional cases, such molecular electronic transitions are of sufficiently low energy that they contribute to heat capacity at room temperature, or even at cryogenic temperatures. One example of an electronic transition degree of freedom which contributes heat capacity at standard temperature is that of nitric oxide NO, in which the single electron in an anti-bonding molecular orbital has energy transitions which contribute to the heat capacity of the gas even at room temperature. An example of a nuclear magnetic transition degree of freedom which is of importance to heat capacity, is the transition which converts the spin isomers of hydrogen gas H2 into each other. At room temperature, the proton spins of hydrogen gas are aligned 75% of the time, resulting in orthohydrogen when they are. Thus, some thermal energy has been stored in the degree of freedom available when parahydrogen in which spins are anti-aligned absorbs energy, and is converted to the higher energy ortho form. However, at the temperature of liquid hydrogen, not enough heat energy is available to produce orthohydrogen that is, the transition energy between forms is large enough to freeze out at this low temperature, and thus the parahydrogen form predominates. The heat capacity of the transition is sufficient to release enough heat, as orthohydrogen converts to the lower energy parahydrogen, to boil the hydrogen liquid to gas again, if this evolved heat is not removed with a catalyst after the gas has been cooled and condensed. This example also illustrates the fact that some modes of storage of heat may not be in constant equilibrium with each other in substances, and heat absorbed or released from such phase changes may catch up with temperature changes of substances, only after a certain time. In other words, the heat evolved and absorbed from the ortho-para-isomeric transition contributes to the heat capacity of hydrogen on long time scales, but not on short time scales. These time scales may also depend on the presence of a catalyst. Less exotic phase changes may contribute to the heat capacity of substances and systems, as well, as for example when water is converted back and forth from solid to liquid or gas form. Phase changes store heat energy entirely in breaking the bonds of the potential energy interactions between molecules of a substance. As in the case of hydrogen, it is also possible for phase changes to be hindered as the temperature drops, thus they do not catch up and become apparent, without a catalyst. For example, it is possible to supercool liquid water to below the freezing point, and not observe the heat evolved when the water changes to ice, so long as the water remains liquid. This heat appears instantly when the water freezes. Topic. Solid phase For matter in a crystalline solid phase, the dulong petit law, which was discovered empirically, states that the molar heat capacity assumes the value 3R. Indeed, for solid metallic chemical elements at room temperature, molar heat capacities range from about 2.8R to 3.4R. Large exceptions at the lower end involve solids composed of relatively low mass, tightly bonded atoms, such as beryllium at 2.0R, and diamond at only 0.735R. The latter conditions create larger quantities quantum vibrational energy spacing, thus many vibrational modes have energies too high to be populated and thus are frozen out at room temperature. At the higher end of possible heat capacities, heat capacity may exceed R by modest amounts, due to contributions from anharmonic vibrations in solids, and sometimes a modest contribution from conduction electrons in metals. These are not degrees of freedom treated in the Einstein or Debye theories. The theoretical maximum heat capacity for multi-atomic gases at higher temperatures, as the molecules become larger, also approaches the dulong petit limit of 3R, so long as this is calculated per mole of atoms, not molecules. 
The reason for this behavior is that, in theory, gases with very large molecules have almost the same high temperature heat capacity as solids, lacking only the small heat capacity contribution that comes from potential energy that cannot be stored between separate molecules in a gas. The dulong petit limit results from the equipartition theorem, and as such is only valid in the classical limit of a microstate continuum, which is a high temperature limit. For light and non-metallic elements, as well as most of the common molecular solids based on carbon compounds at standard ambient temperature, quantum effects may also play an important role, as they do in multi-atomic gases. These effects usually combine to give heat capacities lower than 3 R per mole of atoms in the solid, although in molecular solids, heat capacities calculated per mole of molecules in molecular solids may be more than 3 R. For example, the heat capacity of water ice at the melting point is about 4.6 R per mole of molecules, but only 1.5 R per mole of atoms. As noted, heat capacity values far lower than 3 R per atom as is the case with diamond and beryllium result from freezing out of possible vibration modes for light atoms at suitably low temperatures, just as happens in many low-mass atom gases at room temperatures where vibrational modes are all frozen out. Because of high crystal binding energies, the effects of vibrational mode freezing are observed in solids more often than liquids, for example the heat capacity of liquid water is twice that of ice at near the same temperature, and is again close to the 3 R per mole of atoms of the dulong petit theoretical maximum. <laughs> <laughs> liquid phase A general theory of the heat capacity of liquids has not yet been achieved, and is still an active area of research. It was long thought that phonon theory is not able to explain the heat capacity of liquids, since liquids only sustain longitudinal, but not transverse phonons, which in solids are responsible for two-thirds of the heat capacity. However, Brillouin scattering experiments with neutrons and with X-rays, confirming an intuition of Yakov Frankel, have shown that transverse phonons do exist in liquids, albeit restricted to frequencies above a threshold called the Frankel frequency. Since most energy is contained in these high-frequency modes, a simple modification of the Debye model is sufficient to yield a good approximation to experimental heat capacities of simple liquids. Amorphous materials can be considered a type of liquid at temperatures above the glass transition temperature. Below the glass transition temperature, amorphous materials are in the solid glassy state form. The specific heat has characteristic discontinuities at the glass transition temperature which are caused by the absence in the glassy state of percolating clusters made of broken bonds configurants that are present only in the liquid phase. Above the glass transition temperature percolating clusters formed by broken bonds enable a more floppy structure and hence a larger degree of freedom for atomic motion which results in a higher heat capacity of liquids. Below the glass transition temperature there are no extended clusters of broken bonds and the heat capacity is smaller because the solid state glassy structure of amorphous material is more rigid. The discontinuities in the heat capacity are typically used to detect the glass transition temperature where a supercooled liquid transforms to a glass. <laughs> Topic. Table of specific heat capacities Note that the especially high molar values, as for paraffin, gasoline, water and ammonia, result from calculating specific heats in terms of moles of molecules. If specific heat is expressed per mole of atoms for these substances, none of the constant volume values exceed, to any large extent, the theoretical dulong petit limit of 25 J mole minus 1 K minus 1 equals 3 R per mole of atoms see the last column of this table. Paraffin, for example, has very large molecules and thus a high heat capacity per mole, but as a substance it does not have remarkable heat capacity in terms of volume, mass, or atom mole which is just 1.41 R per mole of atoms, or less than half of most solids, in terms of heat capacity per atom. In the last column, major departures of solids at standard temperatures from the dulong petit law value of 3R, are usually due to low atomic weight plus high bond strength as in diamond causing some vibration modes to have too much energy to be available to store thermal energy at the measured temperature. 
For gases, departure from 3 R per mole of atoms in this table is generally due to two factors, one failure of the higher quantum energy spaced vibration modes in gas molecules to be excited at room temperature, and two loss of potential energy degree of freedom for small gas molecules, simply because most of their atoms are not bonded maximally in space to other atoms, as happens in many solids. Assuming an altitude of 194 meters above mean sea level the worldwide median altitude of human habitation, an indoor temperature of 23 degrees Celsius, a dew point of 9 degrees Celsius 40.85% relative humidity, and 760 mHg sea level corrected barometric pressure molar water vapor content equals 1.16% Asterisk derived data by calculation. This is for water-rich tissues such as brain. The whole body average figure for mammals is approximately 2. 9 JCM minus 3 K minus 1. Topic: Mass heat capacity of building materials. Usually of interest to builders and solar designers. Topic: See also. equals equals notes